Hello and um, welcome back to St Michael's Hill. Um, this week I'm going to be doing a little diorama to try out uh, an idea that I have for the uh, new layout. Um, I'm looking to basically recreate a disused piece of track or a section of track um, and in so doing um, kind of show a couple of variations of how that might work. So I'm going to use this piece of old uh, scrap um, 12 mil ply board to uh, to do a little diorama. So first I'm just going to cut this down a little bit. It's not going to be quite this big. I'm going to go for kind of probably 25, 30, 30 centimeters long. Um, probably be most of this width. And then I'm going to lay a couple of uh, pieces of track down and uh, effectively they're both going to be uh, disused uh, to you know a greater or lesser degree um, and then around that there's going to be kind of some overgrown uh, shrubs and um, greenery that sort of thing I'm also going to use it uh, as a chance to practice static grass um, as lots of people know from previous videos it's the area of my current layout that I'm least happy with so it seems like a good chance to try out some static grass so the first thing I'm going to do it's just uh, saw this piece of wood down to size and uh, sand it up so it's kind of got quite a nice appearance and uh, I'll be back with you once that is done. So I've now cut that out, sanded it down a little bit just to kind of take the edge off the corners and the edges so it's nice and smooth. It's not completely square, just cut it by hand. I just wanted to get rid of some of the rough edges so it looks pretty good. So the first thing I'm going to do is lay down kind of a neutral earth colour. In this case it's going to be... Uh, some burnt umber so nothing clever here it's just a case of slopping it on and uh, going from there really the reason I do this basically is just to give it a good base um, it just means that any color that goes on top of it or any foliage uh, just has something to work with if anything shows through you get a nice nice earthy color rather than anything else so just a fairly simple uh, thing to do don't worry if the uh, paint's not too neat it really at this stage is just about covering the the base getting rid of that uh, wood you don't need to be too thick either just a nice kind of thin coat is all that you need. You see that I didn't put that much paint on. It just gives us something to work with. There we go. Once this is done, I'll probably finish it off by uh, painting the edges black. But for now, that'll be uh, good enough. So there we go. Next thing that I'm going to do is prepare the track. So I'm going to just use this uh, piece of old Pico track. Um, I'm going to split it into two um, initially and then uh, work out kind of the length from there. But basically the plan will be um, to have a couple of pieces of track slightly kind of off straight just to keep some interest that are going to go across here um, in various states of kind of disuse. Um, I will be getting prototypical sleeper spacing uh, as that will be kind of happening on all of the uh, the new layout so I've already started um, on a previous project cutting the ties and so I'll do that again on these sections and then use the uh, sleeper spacing jig that I made a, a while back um, to kind of get those about right. There are various ways to cut track. I'm just going to use this uh, rotary tool just to make a, a quick job of it, really. I'm going to try and go for about halfway, which is probably around here. Um, so, a simple case of turning the tool on and then uh, go from there. So there we go, we've now got two pieces of track, pretty much the same length. Um, I'm just going to spread these sleepers back out across it, and uh, for the other one, I'm going to start cutting the sleepers to, uh, or cutting the gaps in between to create uh, sleepers we can fully adjust. 
So that's done now. Uh, it's a fairly boring job, but uh, I really do think it makes all the difference. Um, so well worth taking the time to do it. So I'm going to end up placing these um, over like this. Um, I want one of them to look like it kind of carries on um, forever. <laughs> And one I'm actually going to have that stopped on the actual board. So it'll be something like that. Um, and then we'll kind of build up around it. I'm going to um, lay uh, a little bit of foam here um, to basically give ourselves uh, a little bit of a banner shoulder, which is always important. Um, and it generally is how the, uh, the railways are, are laid. So I'm going to do that. Um, and then I'm going to basically look at how the track is going to go down. But uh, certainly to start with, there will be uh, certainly the shoulder the whole way along both tracks. As with previous layouts, um, I will be using uh, Woodland Scenic's track bed to uh, give a good kind of uh, bed for the track. So I'm going to cut it quite simply like this and, uh, and go from there. It's super simple to cut just with a scalpel blade. It cuts very nicely. Um, and. Yeah, it's a fairly simple thing. So I will just lay that underneath where I want the tracks to go. Um, something like that. This should be probably the, the right width for a double uh, line of track. Might make it a little bit thinner, um, but not much to be honest. And then I'll cut that across there, uh, making sure that the rails are still uh, going off of that end where I want them to. I think they are absolutely fine. So I'm going to just cut this to, to shape now and uh, then I'll get it glued down. If you don't have any of this wood glue, um, PVA would probably work or copy decks or anything like that. Um, but yeah, highly recommend getting some good wood glue. I'll leave uh, a link in the description below. Um, it's available on Amazon and uh, yeah, easy, easy to use. Dries fairly quickly and it's very, very strong. Just gonna place that in position. And then leave that to dry. Just weight it down a little bit. Shouldn't move too much, um, but we'll leave that like that. Once that's dry, we'll be able to start laying the track. Whilst I'm waiting for that to dry, I'm going to give the uh, track uh, a bit of a paint. So I'm going to use this uh, camouflage spray paint brown from Halfords. Should give just a kind of fairly brown all over colour that I'll be able to work with on the track. So it's going to be a obviously diorama which isn't functioning and this is completely so I'm going to be looking to basically completely paint these rails. No need to have a, a top that's kind of silvery um, and certainly not one that needs to conduct any electricity. So for this I don't mind going pretty hard on the paint. I'm going to give it an overall coat of the uh, brown to start with and then see where we are. I'm going to probably add some dry brushing and various things like that. So I've now glued down the foam. Um, I did decide to add kind of a little bit on the corner here. Um, so that's going to give us a base for the track. Um, like I said, I weathered, oh, I started to weather the track by giving it a uh, coat of uh, grey primer and then have uh, hit it with a bit of the uh, camouflage um, uh, paint, which is fine. And that gives us a good base to work from, but that's really not what um, I'm going for in terms of disused track. Um, nearly all of the track I've seen that is now disused is wooden sleeper track. It kind of, um, I suppose, makes sense. It's certainly the older stuff, and uh, if it was going to be updated, they'd probably be using concrete sleeper track. So I'm trying to create kind of an old weathered wood track. Now, the sleepers um, are certainly not going to be this dark brown. Maybe, maybe when uh, it was new, it would have been this colour. So even. Uh, it'll probably be a lot richer and, and, and slightly lighter, but by the end of its life, um, it would be a lot more kind of weathered and greyed. So I've um, put this together, which is kind of almost uh, kind of white uh, and grey, and it, it just looks pretty close to some of the pictures that I've seen, um, rusted rails and kind of rail uh, ties, and then uh, uh, 
um, using kind of dry brushing on the uh, on the camouflage paint I've kind of brought out some of the uh, the color so that's kind of the difference um, this will get a bit more of a, a weathering still um, when I've ballasted um, there will be washes as usual to kind of create a little bit more so this probably will darken up a little bit although looking at the pictures that I've uh, found it uh, is very very light a sleep is really kind of lighting up to kind of a silvery gray um, as they go so I'm going to um, do the same to this piece of track and literally it was a case of with a paintbrush going along the rails and adding um, a mix of uh, um, burnt sienna and burnt umber um, to kind of create a rusty colour. Again, it's a little bit bright, but it will, um, once the washes have been applied, will kind of dull down a little bit. And uh, the sleepers were made by using um, a light grey with some kind of uh, browns um, kind of put in there as well. Uh, and just basically dry brush so we keep the uh, kind of wood grain from the, uh, from the plastic sleeper. And uh, yeah, generally, I'm pretty happy with how that's looking. So um, I'm going to use some copy decks um, to get it laid once it's done. But I just need to get the other piece of track done. I've uh, roughly spaced the sleepers. These will obviously, when it gets glued down, be uh, spaced properly. But as you can see, it kind of it really does make a difference. So that's what I'm going to be doing um, on uh, this piece of track here. So. I'll get to work on that. Once that bit's done, I will uh, bring it back and we'll start to get the track laid. So both tracks are done now. Um, the one at the back, which is the more recent one I've done, I actually use more of the burnt umber um, on the rail and I actually prefer the result there. So I might um, touch the front one up with a little bit more burnt umber, but generally I'm very happy with kind of how that's looking. So I'm gonna get to laying that in just a second. Um, there's going to be a, a kind of a few differences uh, with the track laying. Firstly, um, I'm going to remove a few of the sleepers um, to make it look a little bit like they've been damaged or, or removed. Sometimes you see them at odd angles or things like that. So I'm going to, um, I'm going to go for a bit of that. And uh, the other thing is one of them, um, this back track here, I'm going to have stop a little bit short. So the rails will stop um, and the sleepers are going to stay um, and then it's basically made to represent uh, an area of track where the rail has been removed but the sleepers were left which is quite common on disused railways. Um, I've also got a few extra spare sleepers uh, that I will probably try and use somehow so um, they'll either be just kind of uh, in the uh, in the kind of uh, cess or, or area uh, to the side of the track or maybe somewhere else so that's something i'm going to look to do so i'm gonna get this front piece of track just amended in terms of the color on the rail i'm going to sit that down pretty normally uh, one or two sleepers might be missing or an odd angle and then this back one like i said i'll stick it all down and then i'll cut the rail and remove parts of it So there we go, I've uh, amended the colour slightly and I'm a lot happier with that. So very, very pleased. Now I'm going to uh, use copy decks to sit this down in the usual manner. So um, basically apply it liberally to the to the foam, wait kind of 20 minutes um, and then uh, place it down. Um, I'll have a, a few seconds then to adjust the uh, sleepers um, and uh, as it dries fairly quickly, I'll probably space them before I stick them down and... Uh, I'll go from there. Um, I will end up obviously trimming um, the track as this diorama board is going to be a self-contained thing so that will uh, obviously make things look different but I'll do that at the very end so I'll make sure that any kind of odd little bits of track I have a little bit further up around here. This back piece as I said will uh, leave and then remove the rails at the end. So there we go the uh, Copy decks has been liberally applied. Um, so in about 20 minutes, this should go um, kind of clear and tacky. And at that stage, it's ready for the track to go down. I'm going to actually space out the track right now. So using the jig I made, um, it's just a case of placing on, getting the sleepers in the right place and, uh, and moving on. So it's a, it's a very easy thing to do. Um, works on all, all the kind of track that I kind of work with. So just uh, apply it like this give it a little wiggle and 
and sleep is far more appropriate. Uh, spacing. Um, occasionally they'll just need a little bit of a, a wiggle. The jig is by no means perfect. It's something that I pull together out of balsa wood, um, but generally it's, uh, it works very nicely. It gives you a nice even spacing that you can just uh, arrange. So I'm going to get the tracks um, spaced ready and then uh, we'll, get them, we'll get them down. So here we go, they're pretty much done now. Um, one at the front is going to be at the front of the diorama, so it's got a few bits here that are a little bit uh, gappy. Um, and the one at the back is a lot more kind of uh, standard. They will need some final adjustments just as they go on, things move around, um, but generally the spacing is about right. Um, so as soon as this copy deck is uh, dried, I will uh, get that stuck down. So the uh, copy dex is almost fully dried now um, and the track's all in place. I've trimmed off the edges to keep it all uh, nice and square so at the end when I put on a facial or something um, it's uh, all looking good. Um, I made a few kind of additions as well so um, a few sleepers which have been broken like this one here. Um, again this uh, version here has just been kind of broken a little bit as with this one here. Just tried to make it look like the, the wood had kind of finally given up over time. Um, and, and down here we've got one that's completely missing in a few kind of odd angles. And as you can see, I've kind of uh, created an area which doesn't have any rail. One thing I do need to do is just tidy up these ends, obviously where it's been uh, filed down, it's uh, used, uh, um, sorry, where it's been filed down, the, the silver of the rail has all come through. So I just need to put a bit of the uh, burnt sienna or burnt umber on there and uh, kind of tidy that up. Um, but yeah, generally quite happy with this. Next step is going to be to um, put the ballast down. Um, now it's not going to be done in the same way as usual, just because obviously there needs to be a, basically a different sort of mix. It's not going to be pristine in any way. There's going to be kind of quite a lot of earth in with that um, and also some foliage to come up afterwards. One thing I will try is um, this section here where there's uh, a sleeper missing. I'm going to try and ballast with it in and then remove it um, just to kind of make it look a little bit like the sleeper has been removed perhaps by some kids or something like that. So that's going to be the, uh, the next step. When it comes to ballasting, um, I think uh, shots like this are really useful. Um, it's from the Facebook group Disused uh, Railways and uh, you can see here the ballast actually between the tracks is fairly well intact for, for a lot of the uh, for a lot of the railway, um, some on the uh, edges is, is far less uh, intact. So I'll try and recreate that. Um, you can see this back track here, um, it's very overgrown indeed. So a little bit uh, will be kind of done in, in that way, but still it will have still been ballasted. So we'll go for this. Uh, so kind of a, a fairly uh, good amount in the middle um, with a lot less on the outside. Touched up those edges now to uh, take any kind of really obvious shine off of them. Um, so it's going to be time to ballast. I will uh, get that down using my usual method, which is uh, using this trusty uh, spoon. So I'll uh, get that down onto the track and uh, get uh, the spoon to basically tamper it out. And uh, once that's done, I'll uh, use the usual kind of uh, glue and water mix. Um, like I said, it will look slightly different to usual, uh, more in the middle, less kind of on the outsides and a lot more kind of earth uh, scatter mixed down into the uh, the edges. But uh, other than that, a fairly usual job. One thing I'm very aware that the tracks are probably slightly closer than uh, they would normally be. Um, that's not so much a problem on this diorama. Um, so I've applied the first layer of ballast. Now I've kind of done quite a light layer, probably even lighter than it will end up being. So it's probably going to take a few layers, but uh, yeah, applied it in the usual way. Um, so I'm going to leave that to dry until it's uh, pretty hard. And then I will look at doing another layer. Um, I really don't want it to look like it's overfilled all the way along. Um, and I think the other thing I need to do is start getting some earth kind of tones in. Um, I've, like I said, done mostly the middle of the tracks. The uh, other areas are fairly uh, sparse. I'm going to use earth to kind of fill those in. So 
I'm going to wait for that to dry. I'm going to do a little bit of uh, work on trying to build up some scenery now. Uh, I think the plan is um, I'm going to have a little bit of an embankment on this side um, and then something along there, but uh, just to keep uh, just to keep uh, a little bit of interest and rather than it being flat, but it's not going to be a full board. So I'll probably use um, some polystyrene or something to do this side. And I'm not sure what I'll do here. Probably just some uh, filler or something to create a non-flat surface. While the tracks and the ballast are still drying, I've uh, cut a hillside basically out of the polystyrene. I'm going to pop that in position. I might use some copy decks to try and seal some of the uh, loose bits kind of in, and then I'll use either plaster or uh, polyfiller to kind of go over that and build a nice hillside. I know a lot of people like to use sculptor mold. Um, it's not a product that I've used yet, although I probably will try it out at some point, but I just don't have any uh, right now, so. Um, I'll stick with the old polyfiller um, and uh, plaster root. Uh, down this side I am just going to add a little bit of depth to it, um, probably just using the polyfiller, um, but it's not going to be uh, any build up hillside or anything. Once that's done I will be able to uh, start the scenics. So there we go, the uh, filler's been applied um, on a first level type thing. Um, I will end up sanding some of it down. Um, but generally you see what's kind of uh, the terrain's probably going to look like. Once this is all kind of dried and sanded down into kind of a nice smooth kind of shape, I will uh, probably paint it all a kind of earthy colour, earth brown, and uh, on top of that we can start the scenery. So it's the following day now. Um, the uh, filler is all completely dry. It just needs to be sanded down. There's kind of a few areas that... Uh, Look a little bit odd. I'm not going to go overboard for a couple of reasons. One, um, obviously ground isn't flat uh, and most of this is going to be covered anyway, but I just want to get rid of a few of these bits where it looks more like meringue than ground cover. So um, I'll do that and then I'll uh, give it all a, a rough brown uh, shade of paint and we'll, uh, we'll go from there. So I've uh, obviously put down the uh, brown coat but also added some uh, beginnings of uh, scenery. So I've just gone with some fairly um, liberal scatter and then started to building up the push areas. Um, it's going to be a couple of main areas and then some other bits around. So um, a little bit like that photo I've shown you, I've had some of the bushes encroaching onto the track and also I'm going to have a large bush section here. One thing I'm going to do is create a bit of a, a wall that goes in here, a bit of a retaining wall. Um, so I'm going to show you that section next. Um, this is obviously still uh, been given a, a fairly heavy dose of kind of water and um, watered down PVA so it's not looking uh, in its best condition right now but uh, as it all dries it'll look a, a lot lot better. So I'll bring this back to you once it's done and uh, in the meantime I'll get working on the wall section. When it comes to uh, walls, I always use the same kind of uh, technique. So this uh, embossed plastic card is great because it gives you a great brick pattern, but allows you to fully customize paint colors and weathering and all that sort of stuff. I find sometimes with um, either card or paper printouts, firstly, you're kind of stuck a little bit to what you can download. And there are obviously lots of uh, kind of kits and uh, wall patterns available, but um, you certainly you have to find one that suits you and then secondly um, I find that the paper doesn't take weathering so well so I'm just going to cut out a section of wall that's going to be four and a half inches by half an inch um, and that's going to give you my uh, wall section I'll just uh, paint that up using um, a basic technique of just getting the, the red and uh, brown wall colour brick onto the plastic card and then once that's done I'll use a wash of a lighter colour to fill in the uh, uh, the gaps in between the bricks um, and, and get all that kind of filled in. So that's what I'm going to do. I'll show you that once it is done. So here is the final result. I've um, decided against using kind of a, a light mortar colour. I did look at using something like this, um, but as it's going to be quite an old uh, brick wall, the mortar generally starts to go a lot darker and all that sort of stuff. Um, I've then added a fair bit of weathering to the bottom of this, made it kind of uh, a lot browner with a few then streaks coming down and even stuck a little bit of foliage onto the wall. So I'm quite pleased with that. It's going to fit into position fairly nicely and then probably a lot of it will end up being covered by more foliage anyway. But I just wanted 
an additional little piece of detail um, just to add a little bit of interest to the diorama. So I'll eventually get this glued into this sort of position. Um, then uh, from there, add some foliage over the top of it. Um, I will make sure that it's kind of right up against the, the back wall there, but uh, it's going to need uh, glue before it does that. So I'm just going to wait for everything to dry and then uh, get the glue going. So you can see the uh, this whole area is starting to dry out now and it's starting to look a lot better for it. You can still see there's, there's a lot of wet uh, here and all that sort of stuff. So once this is dried completely, I'm going to start to uh, add a little bit more foliage and some static grass as well. So I've now uh, added some kind of scatters and uh, shrubbery and um, foliage and things like that to the uh, diorama, which I'll show you in a minute. Um, I've also added a few little tufts of uh, kind of bought uh, static grass. Um, and I was going to add uh, some additional stat uh, static grass on top. Um, something obviously I said at the beginning of this video that I wanted to try. It was something that I wasn't too happy with on the... Uh, on the last layout and I'm quite glad I tried it out on here. Um, so I have one of these kind of fly swatter uh, type arrangements and frankly it just doesn't work well enough. Um, as you can see there's just no, no kind of static, uh, very little static. If I kind of pull some of this away you can see that there's a little bit but not really. So I'm quite glad I haven't uh, use that on the uh, diorama because I'm actually very happy with how it's looking. So I'm just going to grab it now and I'll show you what I'm going to call finished and, uh, and talk you through it. So here we are, the uh, pretty much finished diorama. Um, as I said, the, the main part of this was to kind of do a disused track and um, I think I've kind of achieved that fairly well. Um, it's kind of a fairly unused for quite a long time thing, the, uh, the bushes have Kind of grown over the track and obviously there are areas around here that uh, have been completely removed. Now what I really like is the uh, where these sleepers are kind of uh, on their own I think that looks really effective. I've added kind of one where maybe the uh, sleeper has been removed completely um, and left kind of a, a darker mark. Now, I've seen images of this. Um, generally uh, I like the way the track's weathered I think it looks quite good. Um, very kind of pleased with how the uh, the half uh, sleeper has kind of go in and this still has a little bit of drying to do there's a little bit more uh, that needs to kind of uh, be dried off but uh, generally very happy the uh, the wall is uh, in there uh, but it's quite like I said quite uh, hidden away but it just kind of adds a little bit more detail um, for a lot of the uh, additional kind of bushes on top I used um, the woodland scenic foliage which comes in kind of like uh, fairly flat sheets you kind of pull apart and it's quite an effective kind of method alongside the uh, the other um, kind of bushes and things like that from that range so yeah generally overall very very happy and it's been a, a nice exercise and I will look to include something like this especially this end on the uh, the new layout so it's been a, a worthwhile kind of exercise to get this uh, kind of done and uh, try it out. So I think that's everything for today on St Michael's Hill. Um, thank you very much for joining me. Um, let me know what you thought of this like uh, video. Um, it's a little diorama type thing. I've not done anything really like this before. So if it's something you're interested in, maybe let me know if it's something that uh, I've got kind of other experiments coming up. I might film them. If not, then also let me know and I'll... Uh, maybe uh, not bother but uh, thank you again for joining me and i will see you again next week on st michael's hill thanks bye bye as always thank you for joining me today on st michael's hill if you've liked this video why not check out another one from my channel in the top left hand corner if you haven't please subscribe it really does help um, i'll leave a link to do that in the bottom right hand corner of the page thanks very much and i'll see you again next week goodbye